Have you lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Mack's new number one bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps. It contains the Boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation, especially right now. The life has knocked you down. Pick yourself up with bootstraps and bra straps. Get your copy at www. Sheila Mack. Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show. Reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have a very special guest. We have Joe Worthy, the creator of the Worthy Woman Movement. Joe Worthy is the creator of this movement, which includes a yearly live event, co-author collaborative projects, Bally Bliss Retreats, and online VIP programs with a complimentary Facebook community. Joe is the author of Love Worthy, 21 Lessons in Creating a Del Deliciously Divine Life, and is a motivational speaker specializing in women's empowerment. Joe wants all women to rise in their worth, wealth, and wisdom, and to be able to reignite their passion for their business, self-love, and life. Joe believes that creativity is contagious, and so is joy, bliss, peace, and love, and that we need to spread more of our magic around to raise the vibration of female leadership. Joe loves traveling, retreats, fresh produce, cooking, dining out, reading, writing, astrology, beach walks, swimming, and has a huge passion for personal and spiritual development. Uh, right. And she's going to share more about all she's doing right now. So welcome again to the show, Joe. It's great to have you here. And um, I like to start by asking guests um, to share about a time in their business or personal life where where you experienced a tough situation and how you got back on track. Uh, this show was based on my best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. And everybody has been on the bottom and had to reboot in one way or another in life. So I'd love to have you share with the audience something that resonates for you. Well, firstly, hi, everyone, and thank you, Sheila, for having me on your show. It's great to be here. Wow, to pick one thing, like, you know, you got to read, read the book. Like, this is my whole life story in here, and there's so many moments where I've had to sort of, you know, reinvent myself. And I suppose, um, I mean, I could talk about a work, but I'm going to go back to my personal life. And I'm now 58 years of age, and it was in my mid-40s where I had basically was overcoming my third abusive relationship and I basically said I am done I am done with attracting this you know these abusive relationships I need to work more on myself and my self-worth and stop accepting such a mediocre life and and part of that was you know really attracting these relationships so that was a major turning point in my life uh really at that time when I was in my mid-40s and I basically and I talk about it in the book saying I'm done I am so done with this and, and you know, it, it, it's really meant stepping into my courage because even though this third abusive relationship was actually verbally abusive, when I actually threatened to leave or when I did leave, he actually threatened me with my life mm -hmm. and had some pretty seedy sort of connections. But you know what? I was so done 
and I, I talk about women stepping into their their warrior, that warrior, call it warrior goddess, but their warrior, that that real, it's even more than courage. It's really that warrior energy. Mm. And then it was, a, a you know, I, I could talk a lot about what happened afterwards, but that was the pivotal time. Yeah, I would say like four, well, it was actually probably 16 years ago. Wow. 16 yeah, years crazy. ago. And things have changed so much since then. Yeah. So much in personally, professionally, and you know, my biggest message is, is don't women uh, and people. I mean, I say women because I work with women, but you know, guys are abused as well emotionally, and you know, they could be abused, you know, uh, financially and all other ways as well. I say women, but we none of us deserve to be abused. Mm -hmm. None of us um, really should stay in that situation, but it does. Look, it's so many different layers to explore to that get to that point where you go, I am done. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to, and finding that something within you, that fierceness, I call it warrior, fierceness, right. and go, that's it. That's it. I am changing my life. I am changing old behavior patterns. I am changing my mindset. I am changing my energy. Like, so we have to be prepared to change. And I, and I was. It was mm -hmm. like, I've got to change. If I want to start attracting, like I'm big on the law of attraction. I started mm -hmm. studying that in my like early 20s. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, say I went way off my path. But did I? I had some pretty big lessons to learn. So I can now be in the situation that I'm now. And we can, we can you know, you can ask me any questions, you know, what's happened the last 16 years. But that was definitely such a pivotal time in my life. Mm, yes, that is. And, you know, when you're, if you, for those tuning in, if you're in a situation like this or you have a loved one that is really struggling in a, re a, a relationship that is abusive, be patient and be available because it does take time. I mean, cognitive dissonance, that stuff is real. It takes yes. a minute to even realize. And when you realize, then it's hard to get out. And studies show that it takes about seven attempts for a lady oh, and most likely also a man um, to, or a child to get out of an abusive situation. So yeah, it's yeah. a very difficult thing to do. And a lot of our, when we're in a relationship, everything is so tied to that relationship. Our, we have connected friends, family. There's so many connections that we have to break. And I yeah. think that's where your worthiness um, that realization that we are worthy and Absolutely. that we can stand strong and alone when we need to. And I really believe that it's when we attract, when we heal, we attract something better that's more aligned to our new state. Yes. And so yes. we're attracted and attracted to what we know most as love. And when we haven't had proper lover, we've experienced some form of something earlier on in life that we knew wasn't quite healthy as love, we tend to go find that. And then if yeah. you get out of one relationship, you replace it with another until yes. you do the healing work. So if you're, if you're just getting out or getting ready to get out, don't jump into something until you heal. Give that is, time. Yeah. <laughs> Can I make a point about that? Because <laughs> this was the thing with me, when I say my third abusive, the yes. second one, and it's all, we, we seem to have like this, it's all relative, right? Mm -hmm. But the second one was really, really, really bad. Like I'm talking abusive in all forms. Mm -hmm. And that was a time in my life, that was probably another pivotal time. It was two weeks before Christmas in 1997. My daughter was starting school in the January of 1998. She was like, so she was nearly five. And I woke up and had a massive reality check and thinking that it was my a nightmare and I'd wake up and everything would be okay because I was in, in such an abusive relationship um, that was financial, sexual, yeah. physical and emotional and I woke up two weeks before Christmas in my mother's two-bedroom mm -hmm. unit sharing a bedroom with my daughter with no job, no house, no car and no money in the bank and in actual fact he'd clean me out completely and. Um, and a very broken heart, and I had to pick up those pieces. Wow. And I tell you what, it was like, and I did, and I was very lucky because I, I'm very passionate about helping the homeless, 
And that's why I've also aligned, and we'll talk more about the charity that I've aligned with, with the movement a bit later, if you like. That's but that's cool. why I'm so passionate about helping other other people in homeless situations. And unfortunately, it still happens in Australia. You, you, you know, like <laughs> it shouldn't, to, right. you know, really logically, but it does. Wow. And I could have been homeless, mm -hmm. but I had a mother and I had a grandmother who supported me and helped me. And I, I did get a job and I, you know, ended up getting another car in three months time after trains and buses and walking. And I did rebuild my life. But the thing was going back to what I just said, I did meet another a man who seemed great because he wasn't physically abusing me. He wasn't sexually abusing me. He wasn't financially. He was emotionally abusing me. So I thought it was okay, but it's still not okay. Right. So yeah, there was a big, a big journey. It's been a massive journey for me. Yes, yes. So in that last relationship, what was it that finally clicked for you or that what was that point where you finally took your power back? Was there one time or moment or just you were something you started to prepare for? How did that look for you? I just think I, I, write, I, write, I write about it in the book um, and I just go, I, I remember I just like, I'm so over this. I know it sounds like there's so many different layers and processes. And of course, I'm no therapist. I'm coming from a survivor thriver point of view. So I want to say that as a disclaimer, everything I speak about is not from the therapist point of view. However, it was like, it just something just clicked. Yeah. It's like, I am so done. And aren't I worth more mm -hmm. than this in my life? And you know, that's why I'm so now passionate about helping other women to go like, you know, you are so worth it. You are so worth having an amazing life and, you know, not and breaking those patterns and changing your mindset because my this book's love worth is all about my journey of becoming love worthy mm -hmm. and helping now other now that I've been through this massive journey. And you know, I did actually marry my Mr. Worthy. So that's a whole other story. Okay. And I'm now married and I have been since 2017 yeah. to Mr. Worthy. Worthy is actually my real, ironically, my married name. Oh, so I spent my whole life searching for my worth, my self-worth, my self-love, and then I married my Mr. Worthy. But mm -hmm. what a journey to get to where I was, to where I am now. Yes, yes. So you got to learn really quick how to read the red flags. Oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah. that you were looking or maybe not even looking when you found Mr. Worthy. <laughs> well, it was sort of like conscious, a bit more conscious, yeah. I think. Right. And I think, and you touched on this before, mm -hmm. we can live such an unconscious life and we keep attracting the same sort of different people, but in different outfits, different dis disguises, right. but the same sort of feelings of feeling like, abused feeling you know going through betrayals going through loss going through like and we have to break the pattern we so have to reprogram so all you know like all the law of attraction i'm a huge advocate for that but for somewhere along the line there was a massive disconnect mm -hmm. and some very valuable lessons which i now turn into blessings very valuable lessons i had to learn about stepping up and increasing my self-worth so I didn't continue to attract exactly the abuse. And I think that's one of the keys, if I was to put it into a really simplistic way, is that we have to, one, become start becoming conscious of our patterns mm -hmm. and be willing to change and keep working on our self-worth. Yes. It is so important. Now, how does this equate or how did it equate for you in the workplace with your friend group? Was there a difference in how you showed up and how you um, experienced relationships even with business? Yes. Uh, yes. And what did that look like? What kind of changes showed up for you? It was massive. So everything, once you start working on your self-worth and you make a stand and you connect, and you spoke about this too, Sheila, your inner power, I call it your inner power, call it your warrior, call it whatever you like, but stepping into your power and owning who you are, that's when everything, I say the miracles, the magic, everything changes. So you start attracting people that you, 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 you know, that really actually help, that, that, that celebrate you, that you feel more aligned with and you don't feel like you have to be so 
desperate, mm -hmm. you know, out there and, you know, the right people you're going to align with because I was the biggest people pleaser. I was also a perfectionist. So there are two other massive themes that we can talk about. There's so many different layers here. But my relationships, my friendships, starting my own business because even with my work, now I worked in a corporate area both pr um, privately and publicly. So I've worked in public service and I worked in a corporate but from an administrative point of view. But I settled. Mm -hmm. And I dumped myself down. And it was a whole pattern. So it wasn't just the abusive relationships. It was taking jobs that, you know, some were great and I met some great people, mm -hmm. but really lowering my my capabilities of what I was really capable of and stepping into my power. When I started running my own business nine years ago, that's also when things completely changed mm -hmm. because I feel now, even more so now, with the movement that I'm creating, the Worthy Woman movement, that I'm creating is so part of my sole purpose. Writing this book, which was published three years ago and took two, you know, four years to write, mm -hmm. this was part of my sole purpose. Yeah. So writing, speaking, creating this movement, I feel so much freer as a woman. I feel like, you know, that I talk about deliciously divine. I talk about juicy and delicious lives. When we follow our sole purpose mm -hmm. and we stop settling, for that mediocre life, that's when, and you start working on your worth, your relationships change, your friendships, what you do in the world, your your work, your work that you're really destined, that greatness within within us all that we can tap on, tap into, that's when it all changes. Mm -hmm. And this is like the, finally, I say finally, you know, I, I, I honour my journey, but finally I feel like for the first time in my life I am so following the path that I was was destined to follow and to help other other people and particularly women. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So if you're listening in uh, and you have a business and you have uh, people, employees or co-workers, you can see how relationships really affect productivity, uh, showing up and you're not really present when you're going through a breakup or somebody's being abused or dealing with some stuff at home that's not so good, you can see it. It, it comes out in different ways. So it's really important to be aware and offer some type of help or resources. Now in the United States, we have 211, which is uh, you can Google and there's different shelters and different um, help and resources. And I'm not sure you probably know what more about what's available in Australia uh, because you need to get safe. You do. Family, friends, um, religious organizations, whoever you're, you surround yourself with, get into a group of safe people. Yes. As that, like yes. you had your mom, someone, some, sometimes you don't have family, but you have friends that are like family. And yeah. so those, those friendships, those groups are so vital to, Absolutely. yes, to survival and, and success. And in Australia, we are very, very lucky. We have so many resources. We have a great, you know, even health system here in Australia as well. We have so like, you can go to the GP mm -hmm. in Australia and you can get a mental health plan. You know, yeah. you can go and see a psychiatrist, psychologist, counsellor. Like mm. you can get a mental health plan. We are very, very fortunate here. And that's not, I know that's very different in the US. Right. I, I'm also lucky. I mean, I, I, most, of, most of my adult life I've had private health insurance and a lot of people don't have that as well so but they're not just so there's the therapist road there's the friendships and yeah. surrounding yourself with a few selected people that you do trust and rebuilding and being patient and loving and compassionate and then there's a whole there's so many other different natural healing that i'm a big advocate mm -hmm. for as well so yeah. it's very much a holistic approach mm -hmm. of your mind body soul and heart and I was really good at looking after myself from a body care perspective. And I've been down this natural healing journey since I was 18. So, you know, I'm proud to say that I don't I don't take pharmaceuticals. Yeah. I, you know, I'm very lucky that I have fresh produce. I right. feel very grateful that, you know, I can buy the best produce. You know, like we have, um, I live on the Sunshine Coast now in mm. Australia, which is Queensland, yes. um, southeastern Queensland. We have so much amazing produce and amazing healers, mm. therapists, 
So, you know, every, there's so much available. We just need to actually put together a beautiful plan, holistic plan and reach out like, and just know that every one of us, every single one of us can change and it, regardless of what we've been through and we could have been to hell and back yes. numerous times that we can come out the other side and the sun will shine and there are people that want to support you and love you and care for you but most importantly it starts with self you need to start loving self and honoring who you are and really a lot of forgiveness a lot of gratitude and really turning your lessons your harshest lessons, they're the, you know, from people particularly, they're the ones that teach us the most about ourselves. They're the ones that will teach us what we need to heal mm -hmm. from at a deep level. So all those abusive men that I may have attracted, they were teaching things about myself that I hadn't healed. Right. Very much so. And abuse is not gender specific. Like you said earlier, oh, yeah. it happened to anyone so it's very important to whoever's listening. And if you know someone or if you're going through something yourself, take the action steps. It really is possible to have a beautiful life on the other side. And it's going to be so much better than what you're going through right now. It might take a minute, but it is so worth it. Priceless. Absolutely. Yes. And my heart goes out to anyone who you know you know and it does it's it's a lot of it's a lot to contend with but like you said Sheila to feel safe mm -hmm. to wake up, to go to bed to know that you are safe you know yeah. it, we all deserve the basics of, of shelter and safety and 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 you know love in our life and then mm -hmm. everything rebuild from then from that point yes and that safety you hit on a, a really good important point when you find, and this is, it is possible here, you found Mr. Worthy and <laughs> is a hundred percent possible to find. And when you find that other person, partner, lover, that, that actually makes you feel safe and, and they know that they're safe with you, it's an incredible thing. And it, believe me, they're, they're out there. There are healthy, safe people, and it's just your own healing so that you're, at a, in a healthy place that you're yes. going to attract and be attracted to another healthy person. And so yes. they are out there. They do exist. Don't give up, but the work, <laughs> it, you know, you can manifest and you can and have attraction, but you still got to do some of the work. And oh. that, that, that yeah. self work is the most important work. If you're a parent, it will bless your children. It will help your children as you heal, as you step out and you oh. take, take those healing steps, you'll see that it'll reflect in your children. Or maybe yes. you're just um, have nieces and nephews, whoever you are modeling for in your life, people will see the change and they will start making those changes in their own life. And this is the thing about like that takes it to a whole new level, Sheila, with with being a mother. Mm -hmm. or being a father I'll talk about being a mother because I'm a mother and my daughter is 30, is 30 now and I'm so proud of her she's a strong courageous very capable amazing human being and you know maybe I'm a little biased she's my daughter but I, actually just before we went live I got a message from my daughter saying you are an incredible human being and I'm grateful that you exist in my world and it was sort of like these little tears were sort of welling up in my eyes because what a journey we've been on together. Like mm. what, what we, and we have, to, I had to go through all that mummy guilt because yeah. my daughter was a young, young, you know, like a toddler when she's experiencing through me abusive relationships. Mm. So you have to go through these, there's so much. And I talk about forgiveness. We need to forgive ourselves. Like there is no way in the whole world I wanted my daughter to suffer, but she did through me. So the more, and you said this, Sheila, I love your wisdom. You said we, as we heal, we heal our children. We heal generational trauma as well, our mothers and our grandmothers. And I'm like, I'm an, as I'm saying that, my mother passed away in 2017 and my grandmother passed away 10 years prior to that. And I, as I'm saying that, every part of my being, I can feel their presence around me. So um, thank you, Mum and Nan. <laughs> but we help heal because maybe, you know, they settled too. And maybe they were emotionally abused or abused in some other form. So I was determined, maybe not conscious at that time. Now I'm conscious that 
I had to break this pattern and my daughter does not deserve in any shape, way or form or anyone deserve to be in abusive relationships. And she did attract it. She's broken that cycle. Very I good. have seen it and it was like breaking my heart. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Like I think I was a pretty good parent and I was a single parent for a few many years and I was a great parent in many ways, but there was that, oh, my goodness, that mummy guilt that I had to work through those layers. And yeah. I will say, um, I don't know how spiritual some of your and open some of your listeners are, but one of a beautiful practice, it's a beautiful Hawaiian practice, is the Ho'opono Opono. Yeah. I use that, like I still mm -hmm. use that. You know, I'm sorry, thank you. Uh, now, now I've got a blank on it. I am sorry, thank I you, you, I love you. Please forgive me, yeah. Please forgive me, I'm sorry, Yeah. thank you, and I love you. Yes, and yes. four, and you can Google it. Um, you can pop it in the comments. I'm not sure what you do from your end, Sheila, but um, it's a beautiful practice. I use it sort of like a ritual, like a like a mini meditation. And you know, and I think it all forgiveness is a big thing. It's a it's a it's a it sounds so simple, doesn't it, to forgive? Right. But when you start forgiving yourself, and you've got some tools that you can use, and one one of them maybe the whole pono a pono. Um, I'm big on the I am statements. There's, there's quite a few easy practices. Like we don't have to overcomplicate. We, there's some beautiful fundamentals and I talk about them all throughout my book because not only is this a memoir, it's a self-help guide. I right. go through after each chapter some of the fundamentals that I use to become love worthy. Mm -hmm. So even though it's a big story, it's also a practical self-help guide as well. Apparently, I've heard that it's a page turner. That's what my readers have told me. They go, oh, my goodness, my business coach recently was reading it and she said, oh, my goodness, Joe." She said, I actually forgot one of my client appointments. I got so, <laughs> so involved in your book. Oh, but that's wonderful. Yes. It's, it's, go back to the basics, I say to people, the fundamentals. Stop. You know, it's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. Get the help you need, whether it be a therapist. Get the healing that you need. Eat healthy, move your body. Now that's a that's a thing that I had to learn, which I'm recently actually all about moving my body and getting into exercise because I was great with the heart and the mind and the and the soul, but I neglected my body. Mm. So I've just gone back to actually changing my eating habits, exercising five times a week. So I talk about wealth. I yeah. mean wealth in all areas, but we can talk about that if you want. But I'm actually working now on my body. And let me tell you, I mean, a lot of people get this, and I was maybe a slow learner in this area. Moving our bodies releases trauma. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And I know that is, that is research on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so healing for me to go. Uh I do a hot yoga um at a hot <sighs> studio that is just my my kids when they're in town they come with me it is it's oh. like my meditation prayer time movement uh, meditation and motion and it's so healing and it's not about looks as much as it's about my mind oh. just clearing my mind and and then i can sleep you know then i take the cold shower thing that's supposed to be healthy oh and, and then i sleep like a baby uh, yeah zero medications. I do switch to all healthy eating with this um, incredible guy, um, Belden, who does nutritional fitness and uh, was on the show. And so it is, it is important. And again, guess who? My kids, I have six, I adopted three, three of my own. My oh. kids started eating healthy too. And they cool. started working out more because they're going to college cool. or they're just working and, and they weren't making time for wellness. And so it was me, but it wasn't me saying anything or preaching no. to them or, or telling them, go do this. It was me doing. You're the role model. And that's and it. You know, we have a huge influence on our, um, for me, it's child, but for our children. Yes. And my daughter, like she grew up on like organic food. I was, mm -hmm. I worked hard though. And I wasn't a smoker and I wasn't a drinker. So my money, I'd go and buy the Scotch fillet steaks, but I didn't. But I didn't go. And you know, people go, "Oh, it's okay for you. You can afford it." Well, actually, I actually, you know, worked hard to be able to put good produce on my table for myself and my daughter, and it was a priority. And because I didn't spend money on cigarettes or alcohol, I had more money towards my food. So it's mm -hmm. all about prioritizing, and it's all about you know, like, 
And I, you know, don't get me started on that or oh, it's okay for you comment because, you know, people just don't know. They don't know your story. You, mm -hmm. And we don't know anyone's story. And let's that let's be kind. Let's be compassionate. Let's not let's not assume what are, you know. We don't know what other people have been through or what they're dealing with right now in the world. And let let's face it, the last few years has it been even tougher for people. It has been. It's like 2020, and there that's the pre games, and here we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank goodness we've come a long way since 2020. I actually I actually published my book in 2020. Did all my book launches, my live book launches, and I just finished. I just got back home. And then the whole thing, you know, what happened in the middle of March, don't we? You know, the whole world just about shut down. But what a journey. And there's been also lots of blessings coming out of it as well. And I think that we, as long, I mean, I know this is a simplistic way of putting it. If we can keep in our love energy, if we can keep in our gratitude and be grateful for everything we have, and we and we we project that out to the world. That is what the world needs more of. The world needs more love. The world needs more compassion. I talk about joy and bliss, and you know, and that doesn't mean I don't care about what other people are going through. It's horrible what some people have to contend with. But if we can keep our vibration high, that's the best thing that we can do in this world. So I will put on my favorite music. I will dance around the house. Mm -hmm. I sing very badly, but I sing. And I ran my online programs during that whole time. And women were actually, that was like their vitamin pill. And I don't say that with arrogance. They would show up. I would be playing music. We would be dancing. Yeah. And then we'd do the personal development. I'd guide them through my program. And that was like their vitamin pill, particularly if they're from Melbourne in Victoria, where they experienced so many different shutdowns and lockdowns mm -hmm. and God. That was like, oh, my goodness, I get to meet up with this beautiful group of women and Joe's built this great community of women. And even if it's for 90 minutes a week, that is like, that's my vitamin pill for my heart, mind, body, and soul. Yes, yes. And I have been connected to so many incredible people all over the world now. And that's how I found you or we found each other yeah. through our media queen. Uh, so oh. I'm giving a shout out to Aldwin Altuni, and she is the media queen in Australia. And I was in the group. So I got to meet with people all the way over in Australia back in, this was back in 2020 when I connected with her and I had this book coming out. And so it was interesting and beautiful to be able to connect with people and attend events that I would never be able to fly out to Australia every other week to go to or whatever. So it, it has changed the way we do things, but it's a beautiful thing to be able to do that. Yeah. Yes. Cause because yes. even my programs, like I had a lady from Sweden and I had, you know, a lot from around different parts of Australia, even from WA to Brisbane. And I don't know whether, you know, you know, you, you know the map of Australia, but all parts of Australia, we came together. And, mm -hmm. we, you know, I was running live events before the world shut down and I had to re redesign my whole business. But what a beautiful thing. I wrote two online programs, one mm -hmm. aligning with the book. And yeah. then I wrote a program called Reclaiming Your Power, which I'm now right now. My third program is is the Worthy Women program. Warrior yeah. Woman program. So I'm looking forward to actually really, you know, um, that's a new program that I'm about to release. Mm -hmm. It's part cool. of the whole Worthy Woman movement. Yes, yes. So now if you could go back in time, what would you tell your younger self? Let's say um, just getting ready to graduate high school. What would you, what What advice would you give? I never graduated from high school, but I finished in Australia. I finished year, year 11, but I know what you mean. Um, I never graduated. So I laugh about writing a book. You don't need a, you know, don't know to have finished school to write a book. Mm -hmm. And um, we get, we've got to get out of our own way. What would I say to that, to that young woman, young woman might be, uh, I would say you are more than enough that you have, you are gifted mm -hmm. and I want you to go out into the world and I want you to step into your greatness and I want you to actually honour yourself more. I want you to be more self-loving and compassionate and kind to yourself, which all then radiates to everybody else in brackets. Yes. And, yeah, that's what I would have said. And, and don't, yeah. don't at all. Do not. You deserve magnificence. You do not deserve mediocrity. Right. Yes. And that's a question. So if you are listening in uh, on one of the stations or listening in on YouTube or live somewhere, go ahead and put in the comments, 
what you would tell your younger self. We'd love to hear that. All right. And then, Joe, I'd love to learn a little bit more about your next program, your worthy program, what that looks like. How can people attend or learn more? Okay, so with the program, that well, with the movement, can I talk about that? There's actually three major things with it. So the movement includes an amazing, well, I say I know I'm a little biased, oh. an incredible event, a live event that is coming up on the Gold Coast. So if you're from Australia or you want to come to Australia, the mm. beautiful Gold Coast, which is um, also part of southeastern Queensland, and it's coming up in less than five weeks away and this is a live summit where I've got a total of nine incredible speakers I've got two soulful performances there's lots of music it is motivational it's inspirational it is empowering and there's two whole days of that that women can come together face to face and be in this exquisite energy and all rising together and I say worth and wealth and wisdom and it's going to be really amazing so that's part of the movement a very crucial part of the movement I've also collaborated with an amazing other woman who's a publisher and she's a co-author as well in um well she's a co-author she's an author she's a publisher she's a book coach and we're creating a collaborative book project which may actually me, your viewers may be interested in because you can be anywhere in the world yes. and you can be part of the amazing rising in worth, wealth and wisdom book. We're onboarding authors, co-authors right now. You get a whole chapter and it's like compared to what's out there, we are filling the gap. You get book coaching, you get guided, you get like weekly calls and there's this beautiful journey of two months of writing and two months of editing and then two months of publishing and then having the big beautiful launch, which we'll do a launch online as well as face-to-face -face for those women that are coming in from overseas. So that's, a, that's also part of the movement, the book, the collaborative mm -hmm. book. And you'll see in the background here this this gorgeous woman, but I've got a I've got a brochure here. She is the face of the worthy worthy women, worthy woman, worthy women. Beautiful. She's the face. So she's on the front of the book. She's on all my branding, and um, so there's the event. There is the uh, the co-author book. That um, if anyone is interested in that, Sheila, they can reach out, and we can send them some more more information on that. And there is also my Bali Bliss Retreat. So I have one coming up in June. That is seven days in Ubud, Bali. Mm -hmm. Absolutely incredible. And then there's sort of four. And then I've got my online program, which I'm actually still in the process of writing and creating. And it will be, be launched at the Worthy Women Summit coming up on the Gold Coast on the 11th and 12th of March. So oh. that will be released then. And that's sort of really women, the whole movement, just really to put it into sort of one sentence is about women really recognizing all those parts of themselves that they have neglected, all mm. those parts of themselves that they have not believed in and to step into their absolute greatness yes. in this life. That's incredible. Love that. Yes, we are all worthy women. And for those tuning in now, where can they go to reach you? Is there like a website particularly that? There is a website that's for the event, which is worthywealthywisewoman.com. They can connect with me on my socials. I'm very big on um, Facebook, Joe Worthy, Joe Worthy, Love Worthy. But if you just search for Joe Worthy, um, hopefully you can find me. And um, the email address is admin at worthywealthywisewoman.com. You can send me an email. You can connect with me on socials and you can check out this incredible event that is coming up because you know what? You have Australian viewers and whether, wherever you are in the world, maybe you're coming over to Australia as well, we will welcome you with a huge heart and big open arms as well wherever, wherever you are in the world. So worthywealthywisewoman.com. Com. I've sort of simplified the name thanks to the gorgeous Audwin, yeah. <laughs> my media queen as well. And um, yeah, she's she's a force to be reckoned with, an amazing woman. And we've simplified it to the worthy, the worthy woman, mm -hmm. or the worthy woman, depending on what I'm referring to. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you, Joe, again for being a special guest on the show. And do you have uh, any uh, parting wisdom to give to? ladies out there that are getting back on track right now just be patient 
be patient with yourself one day at a time, one step at a time. And every day, I want you to write up a joy list. Mm. I want you to write up all those things that bring you joy. It could be buying some fresh flowers. It mm. could, could be going for a walk into some beautiful, you know, down the beach or the mountains or the gardens. It could be catching up, you know, having a coffee with a friend. It could be planning your next holiday. I love holidays. I love travel. We can finally travel again. Yeah. It could be it could be as simple as actually sitting out in the sunshine and taking a breath. Write up your joy list and every day I want you to do at least a couple of things from your joy list. Thank you so much. All right. And thank you, Joe, for being a special guest on the show. And for those tuning in, we look forward to seeing you again next time. You can find this show on YouTube, Sheila Mack Show, or directly at NBC's KCAA Radio. All right. Thank you, Joe. Take thank care. Thank you, Sheila. Much All love. Right. Many blessings. Right. You too. If you're just tuning in, this is NBC Sheila Mack Show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and we had a special show today about worthy women and how to overcome abuse in any relationship or situation. So that's such an important topic to discuss, especially now with our economy being interesting at best. People can easily feel trapped in a situation that may be abusive in one form or another and so there are still resources and if you are not feeling safe you are always better off to be in a safe place with yourself and perhaps your family than staying in a relationship that is a danger to you or your loved one's well-being so i wanted to share a little bit of a personal story I can tell you a little bit about abuse and that is I was once in an abusive type of a relationship for several years. It started with some verbal abuse and then uh, there was a lot of controlling and belittling, criticizing, but it soon escalated to some physical abuse as well. It was not a good time and I did feel very trapped, but then I came across a quote that really resonated with me. You don't have to stay where you don't belong. That quote gave me the courage to leave that abusive relationship and start my journey of healing and self-discovery. So the first step was reaching out for help. I talked to friends and family about what was happening to me and they were supportive and helped me to get out of the situation. And then I sought to get some coaching, therapy, self-help to get through any trauma that was possibly sticking to me. This helped me to understand the patterns of abuse and how to recognize and avoid them in the future. I also started practicing self-care and self-love, and this helped me to rebuild my self-esteem and regain control of my life. For me, self-care was about taking care of my physical, emotional, and mental well-being. I started by eating healthy, getting enough sleep, and exercising regularly. I also took up hobbies that I enjoyed and surrounded myself with positive and supportive people. As for self-love, I learned to accept and love myself for who I am, for who I am becoming, and to stop comparing myself with others or going back to the memories of a relationship that wasn't aligned, let's just say. I also wrote down and spoke out loud my affirmations and my positive self-talk did help me to rebuild my self-esteem and confidence. Yes, my main message is, if you are in an abusive relationship or a loved one that you know is in an abusive relationship, you or they are not alone. And you don't have to stay where you don't belong. Reach out for help, whether it's from friends, family, or a professional. Take care of yourself and practice self-care and self-love. 
Remember that you're worthy of love and respect and that you deserve to be happy. And most importantly, believe in yourself and your own strength. You can break free and return to safety and self-love. All right. And if you are looking for more resources to get out of a situation and perhaps you don't have a lot of family um, to support you in this, then please look into the 211. It is available in all of the United States and uh, all the provinces in Canada. And 211 in your state, or if you dial 211, that will give you a lot of resources to help. All right. I just thought this was such an important subject, and I hope this helps. Now, back to some more messages. Found something magical, something new that I am loving at this stage in my life. I have been switching to the cleanest, best, healthiest makeup, shampoos, uh, facial products. So I did find a incredible uh, makeup line, and they have been around quite some time. It is called Beauty Counter, and if you go to beautycounter.com slash Sheila Mac, S-H-E-I-L-A-M-A-C, or SheilaMac.com, and at the top of the menu, look for Natural Beauty, that will bring you to the site where you can learn about the specials and give clean beauty a try. I am just loving the difference it's making in my face. And one of the things that was really bothering me was a lot of the other products. I, I could not find eye makeup that wasn't irritating. So this is really like one of the few products I can actually wear around my eyes. And so I'm really loving everything. It makes my skin feel really clean and fresh and so give it a try. Again, SheilaMack.com slash natural beauty to learn more. If you are just tuning in, this is NBC's Sheila Mack Show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and I have some news for you. Yes, you. I'm celebrating my third year now on the station and will be expanding the show to a global network as well. You may now find The Sheila Mack Show on all major podcasting channels. And if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, all the episodes are now available for viewing there as well. And I'm asking you for a quick favor. If you like the show, please help support the spread of this reboot channel on YouTube as well. My goal is to help as many people as possible through our interesting times to rebuild, reinvent, and reboot your business and personal life. I also wanted to share a little bit more about how I got here, what I do now, and how designing a business career and life on your terms is more than possible at any age or stage in life. I am an enterprisingly forward-thinking consultant, show host, and best-selling author. But how did I get here? Well, I began my career as an entrepreneur and property investment strategist back when I was 23 years young, when I boldly quit my government job with NASA JPL to open my first of five large gift stores while also starting to invest in property. I got to work with some of the world's most loved companies, such as negotiations on leases with Warner Brothers and winning trips to London as the top-selling Crabtree and Evelyn provider in the U.S. for multiple years. My stores were built on heart as I gave back to the community I came from. So now, some of you know this and some of you don't know this, but as a young girl with parents who were not well enough to care for me, I was homeless at age 10, then in foster care, where it was really hard to get a job while in the system. I finally emancipated at the age of 15 to start college early. 
While running my stores, I worked with a government program. Back then, it was called Job Training Partnership Act, making my stores an open source training site where close to 200 at-risk youth started their careers. Yes, I began my career helping business leaders and working professionals to design a life they love where they can have success in their careers and get to the business of life. See, a funny thing happened along the way. Uh, when I first opened my gift store, it was kind of crazy because I was this young upstart. That's what a lot of the store owners called me. Uh, my first store was in Montrose, California, in this sweet little hometown uh, shopping park with other stores and restaurants nearby. And so I was the young upstart that didn't know what she was doing. At least that's what everybody said. And I didn't really care what they said. <laughs> uh, I, at that age, you know, their opinion was like, I don't really care. So that, that was probably a really good thing because I stayed focused on what I needed to do. And I had negotiated uh, to lease out a 5,000 square foot gift store that needed a lot of work and I, I got free rent and uh, for about six months and I had to start making the rent, which was 5,000 a month, which was a lot of money back then, a dollar a square foot. And so I had to learn and relearn. I, I finally did hire qu quite soon in the game. I did hire a marketing expert, branding expert, I guess back then. And uh, that lady really helped me to figure things out when I first started. And when you first start a business, especially when you're young, it was like, <laughs> I had no idea what to do, but I needed to learn because my rent was going to start coming due every month. And over that time, I started having more success. I did crazy things like stayed opened until almost midnight every night, along with the restaurants who were very close to my store while everybody else closed shop at about 5 or 6 p.m. So I was making more money from the start, and I just really, my store was to help my kids, and the products I sold was whatever the community wanted. I sold lots of things to people in the entertainment industry. I worked with cruise ships. I worked with many different people in the community, and... Later on, the store owners actually came to me and asked me if I would consult them and help them. I actually started buying my other buildings because I didn't like the idea of my car and my cat due to a fire. It sounds like a country music song, but that was my reality. And yet another rock bottom situation after a long period of doing really well. When we're able to retrain our minds to focus on the positives, we're able to enjoy more of life, even while we're rebuilding and rebooting. We're going to starve those negative thoughts, not feeding them with our attention, time, or energy. When you focus on the good parts of your life, those things that you can be grateful for in this moment, that energy will bring even more good things your way. Contribute and utilize your unique talent. You're not thinking about the problem at hand. You're not showing up for approval. You're just being your best self. You use your rock bottom to set the direction for your life beyond this rock bottom situation. It's important that you are really honest about where you are in this situation. You can't lie because you don't want to give up your personal responsibility. You have to own every part of this and realize it could be worse. It could be better, but this is it. If you aren't able to be honest about where you're starting from, you won't be able to clearly see where you want to go or how to get there. Next letter of boots will help you answer that. The second O is for order of operations. The third step of the boots formula is finding the order of operations. When you're in a rock bottom moment, there are certain steps you know you need to take to get out of it, and you need to complete those steps in a certain order. T is for thinking. The fourth step of the Boots formula is thinking. 
If you recall your thinking at the most successful points in your life, it's probably vastly different from your thinking when a crisis brings you to a rock-bottom situation. Often, at the toughest times, our thinking goes to survival. We lose sight of the possibilities and opportunities that are before us. This is where thinking comes into play. It's vital to have a strong mindset in order to keep our boots on and walk out of a rough spot in life. Thinking leads you to a clear vision of where you want to go on that map of your desired outcome. You've made the decision that you're going to New York. Your bags are packed. You have an idea of how you're going to get there. You know the steps you need to take. Though you may not know how the hell you're going to take them all, but you've made up your mind. That's where you're going. Tony Robbins often says, it's in the moment of decision that one's destiny is shaped. That decision is the thought that comes before the action steps required to reach your new goal. Everything happens in this step, in that decision. You can see it, feel it, embody it. Things start to show up because you're looking for them and you're open to them. You'll start getting the results you want just because that decision is in your mind. It becomes that real to you. Once you have that clear vision in your mind, you have to see yourself as if you already are living in your desired reality. You're just doing the steps to get there. S is for stepping up. The fifth and final step of the Boots formula is a literal step, stepping up. You've gone through the first four steps. You've decided how you're going to show up. You have a picture of where you're going. You know the steps you need to take, and you've made the decision to actually do something. It would be nice if you could just sit, think, and meditate your desired outcome into being. But that's not the way it works. There is some validity to the idea of manifesting what you want, but at the same time, you have to believe enough to actually go out there and take the risk. You have to overcome your fear of giving your first presentation, making your first speech, or writing your first book. You have to get out of your comfort zone, and you have to take those steps. S is for stepping up by taking the personal responsibility required for a real reboot. While the B in boots is about being in the present with who you are in the situation, S is for taking those steps toward the future you want. Is not one size fits all, just like a pair of boots or a bra. So the formula is designed to help you through any situation. To grab a copy of my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action. Tune in again right here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind.